G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing as the Rus, it is Darius P. On the north side, in the color blue, playing as the Mongols, it is Casper. And what a beautiful base he opens up here with. The only real difficulty he's going to have is going to be gold. Everything else he's got tucked underneath his town center. He's got his sheep nice and safe. He's got his Uvu nice and safe. And of course, he's got that tree line nice and safe. There's a bit of a gold back here. He's also got the gold on the front side, but obviously going up against the rules, they're going to be having plenty of scouts out. So it's going to be important for him to make sure that uh, he's very careful about where he puts that gold and make sure he defends it. Second scout already coming out for Casper back on the side of Darius. SP, we do have a hunting cabin, and it is going to be a scout that comes out for him. He's already got that, those two scouts out, and look at the wolves in the corner right here for Dar Darius P. Is that one? How many? How many body boys is that? That's four body boys. That is a lot, and he's just he's just taking him back to the town center. He says, "You know what? That's probably too many. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take him back to the town center." And of course, he's going to be finding them over on the sacred site. That is typically where wolves are kept, as you guys know. Uh, the enemy of the sacred site or anything religious is the wolf, the body infantry, the wolverine, and plenty of sacred site wolves going to be out here in the middle of the map. It looks like sheep are guarding up this sacred site with a boar as well. You can see the sheep out here in the center. Uh, both players now going to be looking to take out their deer hunts as well. Their deer, what do you call them? Deer patches. Uh, so uh, Darius P going to be looking very healthy here. Take a look at this. Take a look at my wolf pack. That's the kind of guy I need right there. A man with a wolf pack. But... Um, yeah, I'm curious to see how this game is going to unfold. Obviously, Mongols up against the Rus. It is a battle of uh, of, of two, two civilizations that do like to set the tempo. Rus, obviously, a civilization that's got a number of options as to how it can play. You can go for this really fast second town center. You can think more about going for a castle age timing. Or if you want, you just stick it with the one base, the one town center, second age, and you just go ham with the archers. So a number of different options. But when it comes to the Mongols, I suspect it's going to be a very, a, a very uh, straightforward play from Casper here. Now, Casper loves... He loves a good little feudal age play, and that's going to be an option for him. But he knows that the Guz build is always going to be threatening, always going to be wishing to take out any feudal age play because it has so much potential. And we've already seen uh, from Casper in this series that he is not afraid uh, to bring out some of those economic upgrades. And I just don't know if it's going to be enough because when you consider that the power that uh, Darius P will have here on the Rus, you know, we're going to see things like the double broad axe come out. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a wheelbarrow come out. And indeed, we do already see that wheelbarrow coming out. Golden Gate going to be going down relatively early here. Five villagers going to be tapping away at that one. So he's going to be able to get up at a pretty reasonable time there uh, but still back here for Casper everything is just going very standard for him you can see that he's not really gone for an early pasture hasn't gone for anything crazy no outposts no barracks no nothing like that so not gonna be going too crazy just uh, just keeping it casual keeping it nice and simple and obviously Darius P here with the Rus having a home map of high view he's gonna be happy with the, the civilization civilization matchup but I think if there's a civilization that is gonna be able to take on the Mongols or uh, rather the Rus it's gonna be the Mongols Mongols a civilization that is very potent once it reaches that feudal age or that castle age and i expect that's probably where casper is going to be going as well uh, we don't see any uh, wheelbarrow coming through just yet for casper but i wouldn't be surprised he is the kind of guy to do it village is going to be moving on to that sheep he's going to be dropping down his uh, his landmark shortly you can see he had the the opportunity uh to to drop it down but obviously doesn't want to avoid or doesn't want to go idle deer stone's going to be coming down no sneaky trade shenanigans going to be happening today but uh, we'll check in over on the other side and see how we've got darius p doing because he is going up to the next age and he is intent on getting up now before uh before we uh, move back onto this game i just want to mention obviously this is a game from golden league if you don't know what golden league is it is a one hundred and twenty five thousand dollar tournament uh, and it is uh, happening th this weekend next weekend it'll be happening all the weekends uh, up until the end of I want to say until the end of May I'm pretty sure so obviously we are about to enter May uh, but it'll be happening for I'm pretty confident every single weekend throughout May as well so look if it's a weekend where you are 15 GMT that's when the games start make sure you're there Saturday and Sunday and uh, we can already see just look at this we got ourselves a little bit of a wolf pack pull uh, I say wolf pack pull it's actually the ball that's going to be coming out scouts gonna be looking to try and penetrate through that hide not gonna have a lot of luck as that scout gonna have to fall back and now attention turned towards a villager a single villager gonna be out here it's gonna be careful oh that villager's gonna be careful he makes his way through it looks like it's gonna be able to take him down as well Darius managing to take down the uh the boar gets that extra 75 bounty and he'll be looking out for that second boar keep in mind that second boar up towards the east side and uh, now Darius he'll be happy with himself out in the middle of the map here we see Casper uh, is aging up what is he what is Casper going for I think Casper might be thinking about a little bit of a feudal age play and indeed that is going to be the case you can see he is intent Khan actually going down a little bit of a uh, misplay there from Casper very rare mistake coming out for him he'll be looking uh, to uh, to feel a little bit better about himself but you can see very heavy on the 
uh, on the wood at this point in time. And I'm curious to see how exactly Darius is going to look to play this because now the scout going to be coming out. Oh, scout takes out the, the villager and he, he walks away. He walks away. He just goes back to where he came from. Oh, you got to love that. You got to love that. Already a villager kill coming out there for Casper. He'd be very happy with himself. Very pleased. But back behind this, we don't yet see a wooden fortress coming out for Darius P. We don't see a stable, an archery range. We don't see nothing. But we do see some scouts up towards the north. He's going to be looking to see what he spots out. It's going to be a stable coming down for his opponent. And Darius P is aware of this. So whether he looks to go for a stable himself and, and go out for knights, because that's definitely going to be a reasonable choice. Oh, Darius, he's doing it. He's going at, going for a two town center play here. And I like this. I think this is a smart move going up against the Mongols. I think you can almost guarantee to get away with this. Um, the, the only real risk that you've got is that if this stable here is a bit of a fake out. Now, obviously, you would expect one or two horsemen to be coming out of that and, and looking to apply pressure. Um, not really going to be able to do much against the Rusta. And that's the big thing, right? So I, I genuinely think in this scenario, Darius right now can just commit. Uh, to he's, he's got the second town center. So what does he do from here? Just keep villagers on your food. Keep villagers on the wood. Drop down your wooden fortress here. Look to defend this position and then just sell your wood that you're gathering for your gold and go for a fast castle. That's literally it. Nice and easy. You know, you'll be up at probably, I'm guessing about nine minutes. I mean, you're going to rush it up as quickly as you can. Uh, and then from there, you can go into horse archers on two town centers. It'll look very nice. The only issue that you're going to have is food, but obviously you've already taken that ball. That ball is going to be finished about nine minutes. So I, I think that's a great option for him. The, the thing that I think could, or what could really spoil the end of Darius here is if he looks to commit towards the second age. And at, at least that's the way I feel about it, because how difficult is it going to be for Darius to actually hold on in the second age if his enemy is going to the third age? And we'll take a look back over towards Casper, because Casper, not only is he going to Towards, he's actually not even thinking about going towards the third. Catch Casper scouts this out, and he's actually going to be dropping down a second town center himself, or at least looking towards the center. I'm, I'm confident that, that, that he is. Where is that second town center? I, I swear I saw a whole bunch of wood in the bank for Casper. Did I not just see 900 wood in the bank for Casper? Am I am I going blind? I I swear I saw 900 wood in the bank for Casper. I. I, I might have misread that. I, I apologize. I might have misread that. I thought he was going for a double town center. I, I, I was surprised. I was like, okay, second town center coming out for Casper. A little bit, little bit strange. I wouldn't expect it. Uh, I, in this scenario, you would think, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. He might actually be thinking about going for a second town center, though. You, you can see the way he's gathering up that wood. Normally, in, in, in this scenario, I would have expected Casper to just be going straight to the castle age. And I think that, that that's something that he would be able to do in, in that he would be able to overwhelm his enemy um, because that, that's something that we have seen from the past. But it looks like he's going to be sticking to some feudal age play here. Going to be dropping down a whole bunch of pastures. Look at that. Heavy on the pastures. So that's where his food economy is going to be coming in. Uh, and then from here, I guess the ball is going to be in the court for Darius. Obviously, one of the difficult things he's going to have to deal with is that this outpost is now going to be securely up in between his, uh, his uh, boar as well as his... Uh, uh, as well as his uh, his outpost. Well, oh, sorry, his... Jeez Louise, get it together, Drongo. Uh, he's got an outpost stuck between his wooden fortress and his base, and that is going to hurt him. He is going towards that castle age, so I think this is the right move, and now we do see archery rangers coming down. So this is the correct play for Darius, and the question is, how is Casper going to go about defeating this? Because this is actually a good play uh, coming out from Darius, and you, you can see that we might have ourselves a little bit of a villager run, at least villagers trying their best to escape, heading into that stealth forest. And Casper is aware. He puts them out into the broad line formation. They're going to be trying to find it. And villagers got to be careful here. Villagers got to be careful here. You can see one of them going to be run into right now. You can He's managed to split them up. All the rest of them. Oh, no, the Khan is here. The Khan going to be able to expose it with its Hawkeye arrow, the scouting falcon. And now villagers going to be looking to run back as quickly as they can, trying their best to make it. And this wasn't, this wasn't what Darius wanted. I mean, this is a very difficult position for Darius. And now we see the attack movement or the movement speed coming off and Darius can be splitting villages up into all directions trying to keep himself alive this wasn't what Darius wanted this wasn't on the cards Casper looking to exploit now a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a tough spot here for Darius as he tries he's up to the next stage but he's going to be losing that food income we talked about that you know he's sitting at 900 of, of the food on that boar still so losing out a large amount of that perhaps it was a better idea to go for this this corner up here maybe it was a little bit safer obviously a little bit further away from the the Mongol base but now Darius looking like he might be in a bit of a tragic position all the villagers have gone down so village account right now for Darius sits on 34 compared to Kaspar who's on 33 so that second town center getting very easily neutralized there but now we see the horse archers mass gonna begin building here and keep in mind Kaspar's got a pretty decent lead he's also gonna be going up to castle himself behind this which is the correct play I, I think in this position all Kaspar needs to do go to the castle age just spam out lances and he is gonna be a-okay 
uh, from this. He's going to look to try and put the pressure on, but keep in mind, if the micro is good uh, from our Rus player, then it's going to be difficult for Casper to go up against it because we have seen top-level Rus players who, who do this exact same build, who, who do this exact same thing, uh, go for a combination of horse archers and just quite literally horse archers. That, that is it. Horse archers, you know, a few scouts to, to throw in there as well because they're nice and cheap, easy to get rid of. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see uh, Darius looking to do that, but he is dropping down barracks here. So that maybe signals the fact that he's thinking about going whether into spears. Uh, probably makes a, a wise choice here going up against the, the Mongol player who is very heavily on cavalry already. Uh, and then that could force out a few archers from him because we do not see any archery rangers coming down just yet. Speaking of coming down though, step right out, going to be coming down. Eight villagers tapping away. A few more villagers getting pulled. 13 villages here. Uh, you'll probably be begin begin to see a market come down as well. Uh, I, I still don't know what happened in that early game. In, in that early game, I, I swear I looked over uh, to, to the UI and saw 899 wood. And I was like, oh my god, a second town center for Casper? What is this guy doing? He's crazy. He doesn't need to do this. Uh, but uh, it, it wasn't the case. I, I don't know what was going through my head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to check the replay afterwards. I'm going to have to see, see exactly what I was seeing. But um, yeah, at this point in time, Step out going to be coming up for Casper. He'll be up at about 11 minutes 40. Not a bad timing at all. And we do indeed see an archery range coming down. So this is something that, that is very common for Mongol players is that they'll move into uh, double archery range and look to get those veteran archers out. So they won't really go into crossbows unless you're obviously making, you know, a lot of units that, that do effectively or that, that are effectively counted by crossbows. In this position, though, it's going to be spearmen that are coming out here uh, as a result for Darius P. And that, that means that it's a, an easy... Or it's an easy way to counter uh, through this uh, through this position. So I suspect, in, you know, in, in this position, we will see that Casper looks to go into the, that archer mass. But the question will be because obviously he can go into crossbows as well off this, and crossbows are going to be effective against the men at arms that may potentially come out. But I'm, I'm suspecting that from the amount of cavalry that Casper has made here, he's going to know that there's going to be spears coming out from my enemy just simply because you know I could make lances, and as a result, it's just going to make sense for archers to come out. But we'll see how he plays it. Darius P now, he's out on the map, but you can see the line of sight coming out from Casper is starting to get bigger. Wallalol going to be coming off in this position. I think it's a pretty decent spot as well. He's moving it forward. I like the way he... Add, I like his moves right there. But unfortunately, you can see the spears just... Or the, the uh, horsemen just so damn fast. They've got that movement speed from the Yam network together with the Khan. Always going to be able to pop that off and now horse archer is going to be looking to try and kite this back wallalol going to be unsuccessful he could have just dropped the relic and run but it looks like it wasn't his day and indeed goes down an expensive loss there for darius p as he continues to fight continues to try and hold on and now unfortunately going to be looking to move it into farms never a position that you want to be in the rules at this stage of the game we're 12 minutes in 13 minutes about to eclipse over uh, and it is not the position that you want to be in. And you can see those relics going to get taken. But at the same time, we have got outposts that are going down all over the map for Caspar. He knows how to play this matchup. He knows what he is doing. Veteran archer is going to be coming through. So it is going to be an archer play. A bit more of an archer mass beginning to build here for Caspar. So doing the right thing. And also we see veteran horsemen coming through. Caspar looking very strong at this stage. Siege workshop coming down. And keep in mind, it's in range here. He sees it. It's not at the back of the base. It's in range. So he knows now that, you know, what is the response going to be? It's probably going to be a trebuchet that looks to come out here. And that, that is great. That is exactly what Casper wants because think about how expensive this trebuchet is. This trebuchet is not only 500 wood and 250 gold. It is also the 300 wood for the siege workshop that you're putting down. And that could have been farms. That could have been horse archers. That could have been ar archery ranges. It could have been so much. But unfortunately, it is not. It is going to be into this siege workshop. And now with that counterweight trebuchet, going to be coming down. I mean, he, he could look to go into a manganel, but you know, you guys know he's not crazy. It's got to be a trebuchet here. Uh, and it's going to be an expensive unit. We see, we hear more more uh, more relics being picked up behind the scenes. Looks like the sprinkled emplacement not quick enough to come through. Actually, he was only going for arrow slits here. So Kaspar uh, avoiding the sprinkles in this in this uh, position and instead looks to fire down on, upon his opponent. And I got to feel like, you know, I kind of like the position that... Uh, that Casper is in, uh, but at the same time, we've seen Darius look to try and take away plenty of these relics, and now Horseman going to be falling back. I think they're going to be able to take this out, even if he looks to try and drop it. I, I think he just needs to drop the relic and run. Uh, he tried to get... I, actually, is he able to get through those trees? Where was he going with that? I think he was just trying to evade. I think that's what he was trying to do. I think he was trying to evade. Obviously, the uh, the, the horsemen and the lancers realized. Uh, but now we see more archers moving down towards this position. He's got four archers moving down in tandem. And he's going to have more coming out. There's the six archers coming through. Blacksmith going to be down. Do we see improved siege engineering? It's not going to be the case just yet. He could look to go into Springwoods. And Imam's going to be coming out. Or rather, Shaman's going to be coming out. And looking to pick up these relics in the middle of the map. You can see them working their way back. He's got one relic here. Second relic up towards the north. Uh, third relic is going to be outside the base of, uh, of his opponent. You can see Darius still has collected up one relic. Where is that fifth relic? It's going to be up towards this northern position. Am I blind? One, two. 
Has it been picked up? Oh, it's been picked up. It's been picked up. So he's working back. He's got two relics there. Third relic on the way back in as well. And now we see more and more horse archers getting added in the mix. Darius is looking good. That trebuchet is indeed out finally. And he's going to be turning his attention down towards the outpost and try and begin working on pushing back this. And you got to say, Darius's position isn't terrible. It's definitely not an untenable position. He's on 64 villages compared to the 49 of Caspar. And remember, he would be so far ahead if it wasn't just for that single outpost. That single outpost comes down and forces out this position from the boar. No longer does he have that easy, easy to access food. And because he doesn't have that easy to access food, it means he's going to be delaying the units that he's getting out. And as a result of delaying the units that he's getting out, all of, his, all of a sudden he loses map control over towards this position. And now we can see Caspar. He is looking, he is posturing. He's found a scout in the in the stealth forest. He's going to be trying his best to take it out. But now that Wallalore is going to be moving through. Through. We hear more and more relics being picked up behind the scenes. It's going to be the, the third relic of the game uh, for him. He does indeed pick it up, and you can see he was just hovering there, waiting, making sure it was all cleared out. And at the same time, and now another raid going to be coming through. No walls coming up at this stage, and those archers are going to be an effective counter to these villagers. Villagers going idle here. He's got to be careful. He's not paying attention. Units are going to be moving back over towards this direction, and indeed those villagers now going to be chased away by that scout. But it's not a not a bad bad position. But you can see how many idols he's got. He's going to have to think about moving down towards a secondary uh, wood source as well as that food source unfortunately it's in the back of his base but just no walls are going to mean that it's difficult for him to even hold on and now going to be spotting out that outpost down towards the south and you can see casper just going with the arrow slits here not even thinking about emplacements uh, or not even thinking about uh spring on emplacements because that's normally what would happen and i do like this play i think it's smart by going for the arrow slits here you're kind of spreading yourself a little bit thinner and it, it makes sense because you don't have a traditional trench normally you would have that trench you know in the middle of the map where there's 15 outposts up over here and 27 outposts down over here and trebuchets out and sprinkles out and all of that, you know, that good old trench goodness. But uh, it looks like Casper just going to be utilizing the outpost to provide line of sight. Does also research the arrow slits there just to make sure that he's got something to defend them, uh, you know, in, in the event that they do get attacked. But now we can see all the upgrades going to be coming through for Casper. Improved engineering, improved engineering, improved siege engineering, uh, double broad axe. Also, we've got that horticulture upgrade going to be coming through at the Gur, And we've also got steeled arrow plus one ranged attack. But Casper looking pretty decent. Military count at the moment looking in the favor of Casper only slightly. Village account heavily in the favor of Darius P. I say heavily, but 11 villages, it's not terrible. Uh, second town center has come down for Casper, so we, we did predict that, that uh, well, not predict, but we, we did think he had gone for an early second town center. I don't know, maybe he was hiding it or something like that, but that's going to enable him to keep up with the rules player. Obviously, when it comes to the relics, relics are still going to be in favor of our rules player, Darius P. He's going to be looking to hold on here to the trebuchet, manages to do so. I think Casper realizes it's probably not a fight he wants to take at this point. There's a lot of horse archers coming out, but uh, the, the foot hold, the foot the Foot Brothers? Uh, the Foot Archer Brethren. They're, let's go with that. The Foot Archer Brethren uh, know to be careful of these horse archers. They've got a lot of damage on them. Pretty cheap as well. 80, 40. Not a bad little price. Not a bad little price. Now, Sacred Sight's getting picked up. Shaman going to be doing its work back here. Where's that prayer tent? Prayer tent moved out. He's got two relics in it. Three relics going to be sitting safely inside the Abbey of the Trinity here. And uh, that gives Darius P. He's got the, the lead with regard to that factor, but... I'm starting to feel a little bit worried for him, just because, obviously, when we look at the the, the way that Casper is sitting up here, he's got the two town centers, so basically that guarantees his late game. He's going to be okay. He's going to be able to scale here with the Rus player. And when it gets to the late game, Rus aren't as strong as they used to be. In fact, Mongols arguably are a bit stronger than them now, just because they have the siege priority. But siege isn't the threat that it used to be. You know, Streltsy are a very, very strong unit in the fact that they are... Uh, cheaper than the enemy um, hand cannon is. And so in the event that we do go Imperial, uh, there is always going to be that threat of Streltsy together with just the cheaper Siege is really going to be very good. Uh, but now that, that Trebuchet going to keep cleaning up the uh, the remaining uh, the remaining outposts over here. There is quite a lot out here, but third Sacred Site going to get captured for Casper. So he's going to have more more trickles of gold than his opponent. It's going to be three Sacred Sites, and you can see the enemy is now approaching Sacred Victory. Ladies and gentlemen, get your clocks out. 28 minutes, 57 seconds. I think that was the timer. And now we see that Darius P going to be looking at push out. Remember, this is match point right here. If Casper wins this game, then he's going to be going through to the next round. If if Darius P loses, then he is going to be going home, and that is going to be it. There is no further... There is no loser's bracket for the losers. This is the loser's bracket. We are in it. It is a knockout match. In the event that Darius P loses this, he will be heading home. But now, adding in more barracks, and it looks like a bit of a meta arm switch going to be coming in here. Casper on the other side, you can see he's going for meta arms himself. Also going to be dropping down crossbow, so he's get, looking to get all of his upgrade, and also going for improved imp uh, military academy.
I don't think I've ever seen this. 35% reduction of training time uh, compared to the 25. That is a lot. That is a huge difference. You, you, all of a sudden, if your military unit was going to take 20 seconds, it goes from being 25 seconds down to 15 seconds, but then this takes it down to a further 13 seconds. That's crazy. That is a really big difference. But the difference between 15 and 13 seconds is a lot. Do not be led to believe that it is it, it is not significant. That is a significant amount of difference there. I like it, man. The, the Mongols, it is impressive, dude. Let's have a look at Elite Army Tactics Improved. 20%, 20% versus 30%, 30%. Like, that's a, that's a lot of stuff, dude. Biology, 30% instead of, what is it, 20%? These are these are cool techs, man. These are seriously good techs uh, for the Mongol late game. And I would be surprised to see them become such a powerhouse in the late game, uh, especially in 1v1 as well, as, as players start to clue into how to play this game a bit more. And this is something that you'll see as players get better at anticipating what the enemies will do. Uh, you, you will naturally see games start to go longer just because players are going to know, oh, well, he's doing this, I'm going to do this. He's doing this i'm doing this and naturally players will get more greedy and as they get more greedy it means that we're going to see players play longer and longer games so even though the the games in the tournament so far have been you know quite shallow with regard to their length trebuchet trebuchet were going up it was going up for a little bit of a kiss there um but uh, even though the games have been quite shallow with regard to their length uh, it's important to remember that the meta at this point is still being unfolded we don't really know what the meta <laughs> could you lob that boulder any higher right now trebuchet Oh, oh, it went over this direction. Oh, he, he, I was like, I was waiting for it to fall. I'm like, how high did he shoot this boulder? Look at the, the arc on that boulder. It was like, it was directly up. I was like, oh my Lord, how high did he hit this? And Manganel's now going to be coming out for Casper. Casper seems to have not gotten, not gotten the memo. Going to be firing down here. Manganel misses the mark. Looks like it's two two men at arms that are slightly damaged there. We'll be trying to hold on in that. Trebuchet going to continue fo holding off. And Casper's ma massive military mass beginning to aggress upon his opponent. He's got a fair bit of units that are in here. We'll look enter into the cinematic view right now as players begin battling it out. Slowly, you see those UI elements drop off the screen as Casper continues pushing in. You can see him trying his best. And Darius P, it looks like there's not a lot of units here. The Archer Balls coming out for his opponent together, pushed up with the Mangonels. The Mangonels represent a significant threat. Yeah, the, the Mangonels, you know, while they're still not very effective, they still are something that you can't ignore. If your enemy's got Mangonels, you're still going to be, like, pushing back, and you're going to be hoping that you've got a way to counter that effectively. But now, the Horse Archer's completely outnumbered by the Archers of his opponent, and this is the timing window that the Mongols are always capable of hitting. It is just so difficult to deal with, and all that farm, all that wood that's been spent down here for his opponent, Darius P. Casper uh, has gone and taken those resources and he's turned them into archers. And now that archer mass continues pushing down upon his enemy as that looks to try and come in for the kill right now. You can see the men at arms together with the archers on the back line doing a very effective job of forcing back Darius P is going to be trying to hold on. You can see he's got relics back here, ready to pick up, but he's going to need more than prayer to save himself at this point in time because this is an absolutely terrible army, a very scary army. Shaman's out here as well, looking to heal up the Khan. I like it. Focusing on that Khan. Have we, I'm not sure if we've seen the, the defensive arrow come off just yet, but you can see Darius is in a very difficult position. He's going to try and kite back towards that second town center. It's not going to give him a whole lot of luck. He continues to unfold, and now we start to see those those uh, bounties coming through uh, for our Mongol player. He's going to be focusing down these farms, and that's going to give him a huge amount of bounty, and good game gets called. Darius P taps out. Casper victorious, and he moves on to the next round. He'll be going up against Marine Lord, so if you're interested in watching Casper versus Marine Lord, it'll be the next video uploaded to this channel. Do not go anywhere, because we've got plenty more action coming up from Golden League. 15 GMT, Saturdays and Sundays. Be there or be square. I'll leave a link in the description. Catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.